Hey guys, welcome back to the second video of the first section of this course. Now we are going to see what we are going to build and the technologies we are going to use. So this is the app that we are going to build. Now, if we don't create an account yet, we have this login screen and sign up screen. And this is our database, which is a Mongo database in Mongo Atlas. And now it's empty because we don't have any users yet. And here is the backend that we are going to use for this app. We'll build this backend. It's a Ktor backend that is built with Kotlin and we'll build this as well in the course. And our app is of course connected to this backend and we keep sending requests to this backend. If we, for example, log in, we add a new movie to uh, our favorites list and then the backend receives that request and then adds that to our database. Now, this is the API we are going to use. It's called the moviedb.org API. We need this API key to fetch movies and TV series and details, videos and everything from this API with this API key. And uh, you can just create an account here and then go to click on this one, go to settings and then API to get your API key. That's as simple as that. And here is the documentation of the API. So the API references to get the details, to get anything we want like movies, TV series, details and all the stuff we'll use uh, and details we'll have in our app, we'll get them from this backend. So let's actually try creating an account now because right now we don't have any account. Let's type a name. So my name like this and then an email and then a password. We can show or hide the password. Let's show it like this. And the, uh, the password has to have at least one capital letter and have at least eight characters. It can't has less than that. Now let's create an account. We sign up. And our account is created. As you can see, if we refresh our database, here is the user, here is their email, their uh, name, their ID, the password, it's hushed because we don't directly store the user's password in the database. In fact, we hush them. And then this is the salt that is an extra layer of security for our password. And this is the media list, which represents the favorites and bookmarks list. Now we don't have anything because we don't, didn't see anything, but let's actually see the app. Here's our account or profile screen. We have the name, the email, we can sign out if we want. And uh, now in the home screen, we can always refresh to get new movies in TV series like this. And there, this is now the trending movies in TV series. If we click on it, we get the trending ones. We keep scrolling and getting new ones as we scroll. And then here we have a special list that is auto swipeable. As you can see, we'll see how to create that. And as you can see, this uh, searching bar and this icon of getting to favorites and bookmarks, we see that is actually showing once I scroll up a little bit, but once I scroll down, it's gone. So I don't have to scroll all the way up to see it. But if I just scroll up a little bit, I can see it, which is a really good user experience. Now here are the TV series and shows. We can click to see them. And here are the popular movies. We can also click to see them, get to see their uh, rating, their uh, January's name, and uh, an image or a poster, an average color of each image. For example, for this image, the average color is kind of red. For this one, it's kind of green. And uh, we'll see how to do all of this. And also here, if I scroll down, I don't see that searching bar in title, but once I scroll up a little bit, I see it to see in which, uh, what media I am seeing right now. So this is popular movies media. Now, if I go here, I can go to the categories. We have action in adventure, drama, comedy, fantasy, animation. If we click on one of them, we'll see now the action movies and TV series. We can click on drama. We can give, go to animations. As you can see, I can always search for something. For example, let's search for any movie like this one. Now, this one, we see we have a video. But in case we don't have a video, we show them this toast, but some other movie might have a video. Here we get the title, the recommended age of watching, the release date, the genres, the length, a sentence that represents this movie or TV series, and then the overview, a similar media list, but let's go to another movie. Let's just go to home here. For example, this one, this animation here. If we try watching uh, a video, as you can see here, we're watching a video, of course, not the movie, but just the trailer because this API does not possibly provide watching movies. I don't think it does. We can watch the trailer. Now we get, as I said, details. We can get to see similar media and movies to this uh, movie that we just saw. 
we can add that one to our bookmarks list and or to our favorites and if we go now to our bookmarks of favorites now it's added as you can see we can open it and get a new one for example this one and add this one only to our favorites this one to our bookmarks we can do just things like this and adding them saving them there and if we go for example let's go to our home and if we do this now as you can see they are all right there saved there and if we go to our database and refresh as you can see now we have those media that represents favorites and bookmarks right here in my database so nothing is lost everything is saved in my database and uh, if i go to home choose another movie add that to bookmarks and add that to favorites and if i choose something that is already there so let's go here we have now these in our bookmarks and favorites we can open them if i for example want to remove this one i can just click on it again it shows me a toast i mean a, a dialogue because i don't want to remove it accidentally when i click on yes it will be removed and when i when i go back it's now gone it's no longer here and i can refresh to sync the data so if my if something is, is not synced i can always refresh to sync but data is always synced and we'll see how we can do the syncing as well and uh, build everything from scratch of course using a clean architecture uh, that is mvvm and using jetpack compose and kotlin and the latest technologies from retrofit room database dependency injection and everything you need to build this industry level app to become an industry level developer and we'll also build as i said the back end we'll see how to connect that to our app fetch data from the backend because now if i sign out like this and uh, my media or my yes my media so the bookmarks and favorites are still in that in the database no nothing is lost even if i uninstall the app and do anything i can always get them to just bring the app here this is our app it's called watchy now i just sign in with my account so this is my email and i enter my password if I enter a wrong password like this, then I can't sign in it. It will show me invalid email or password. But if I enter valid ones and I sign in, now I get them. If we go here, as you can see, nothing is lost. Everything is still available. So this app is also an, a first offline app. If I turn off internet connection like this and I open it, I can still see movies and TV series. So it works in offline mode as well because everything is cached in ROM database. We'll learn how to do caching as well and how to build this beautiful looking user interface and uh, of course when there is no image we show them there this because now we don't have any internet connection so we can't see images if we open something and we don't have some data then we just show it like this and once i even add a movie to my bookmark list now it's not added in the database because i don't have internet connection so it's not synced but if i just for example turn internet connection and i go right here then it will be directly synced even i can make sure by just refreshing and it will be synced to my mongo database as you can see now it says seven so we'll build this app which is power compose this app does support uh, dark mode as well as you can see it looks just great and uh, everything looks beautiful with this app so this is it for this video now in the next section this is the last video in this section of course in the next section we'll start building the app and writing code implementing the main features and this course will include something like 45 to 50 videos demand videos of building this industry level app to become an industry level developer and take your skills to the next level so see you in the next video and bye